Are you strong but not fast? Do you want to build power? Listen to this. Our next caller is Christina from California. Hey, Christina, how can we help you? Hi, um, I have a question. I've been doing some workouts on my own recently. I used to go to a gym, but it got closed during um, the pandemic. And I'm noticing that I am losing out on power. And I think it's because of speed. I haven't noticed as much of a drop off in my strength, but power is not where I want it to be. And I have an upcoming Highland Games competition this summer. So I'd really like some suggestions on how specifically to work on power and speed. Ooh, I love this question. Okay, so um, power is strength that's fast, right? Yeah. So for people watching right now, like what's the difference between power and speed, or excuse me, power and strength? Strength is speed. Yeah, it's it's a big. It's like how far I could you know, or how fast I could deadlift a weight versus how heavy I could deadlift a weight, or something along those lines. It's quite specific, meaning you have to train for it. So, the way you would train for power is by using a sub maximal load, training it at full speed, um, you know, explosive power, and lots of rest in between sets, and not doing it to fatigue. So you're not trying to do it to fatigue the body but rather you're doing it to try to get yourself to be able to move faster. Very unlike CrossFit-esque. Very yes. unlike. Yeah, You're not doing it to fatigue Eliminate at all. Eliminate fatigue. Fatigue is your enemy uh, with anything uh, that you're trying to do power-wise. And you know the best approach to this, obviously with the Highland Games, there's very specific types of... Um, what do you call those? Like different type events. of events that that you know you you get. I, I know the caber toss is one of them. The hammer throw. I, I don't know all of them, but I know they all. Right. There are nine different events. Right. All throwing heavy objects um, for distance or height. Okay. The, it, the haggis throw. That's yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's obviously it's going to be hard to kind of emulate those specifically, but you can do that with kettlebells, like uh, you know something that you could you could uh, apply in your programming where you really just take the time to. Um, work on you know the technique of not just like the swings and getting the hip hinging snapping power out of your hips but also then you know releasing and then throwing the kettlebell out in a field as a great exercise to apply uh, you know specifically for that but really the the, the point is with anything power it, it requires all the, the the intent going into it all the attention you know no fatigue and to be able to you know recover and then produce that same amount of immediate force production. Christina, how, how have you been training, how you train currently right now, or have you trained in the past to get ready for something like this? So I certainly do some event specific training. Uh, so I have some field stones and I have um, a 16 pound hammer and a lighter hammer. So I do practice the events as much as I can. Um, I don't have a convenient caber. So that one I have to trust to cleans and things to work on. Um, but then I do try to supplement um, at home. So I've been mostly doing probably the lifts that I, I enjoy the most, things like um, presses and squats uh, and deadlifts. But I've been trying to do a little bit more power lifting, more cleans and things like that um, to supplement that uh, event specific work. So more specifically, what is like the, the like the training blocks? What I mean is, okay, so obviously you're doing great exercises uh, that you should be doing. Does it look like what Justin's saying where you do a, a rep or two and then rest and then a rep or are you doing, doing it fast? Or are you doing things where you got 10 to 15 reps and then you're also supersetting that with a run around the block or pull-ups or other things like that? How How's the programming look? Right. So um, I would say... I guess I've fallen into the trap of, of wanting to measure my progress. And the easiest way for me to do that is to see what I'm able to do for sets of five or 10 or something like that. So maybe I've been, um, you know, trying to get to a heavy set of five or a heavy set of 10 in one of those lifts. Yeah. So strength will contribute to power, but if mm -hmm. you don't train specifically for power, you're going to miss out a lot. So there's nothing wrong with getting stronger, but if you don't trade, if you don't train for speed or acceleration with a weight that's much lower than you would train for strength with, um, it's going to be hard for you to express a lot of power. Like you know, power lifters are very strong, but they're not nearly as explosive as Olympic lifters, uh, for example. So you got it. I would do some specific days on on power, on trying to throw, like Justin said, a kettlebell or 
mimicking the events. There's also a lot of technique involved in what you're doing. I mean, he made a good point. You know, when you're doing a caber toss, you got to have a lot of power, but you also need to have a good technique and release and know where to position your body to maximize the effect. So I would do, you know, I would practice two days a week the events. Don't do them to fatigue, but really try to get further and further with your throws. A lot of rest in between, you know, your attempts. And then maybe a couple days a week of, of, of strength building and some mobility. And that's yeah. pretty much it. But I, I think just practicing the power stuff is going to make a big difference. I think, and I think mass performance. So there's a phase in there where we do devote. Uh, it's one of our only programs uh, that actually does devote some time to speed power. And, you know, and this doesn't require a lot of heavy load. Obviously, this is more about moving very, very quickly uh, and also being able to recover and, and gather yourself uh, and be able to control your body uh, after you, you know, explode through these types of, of movements. So uh, I think that if I have to pick any, you know, program that we have that I would recommend, you know, MAPS Performs would be one to, to figure that out. Yeah. One more example, Christina. Okay. Squatting with a barbell on your back that's heavy, you're training for strength. Trying to jump as high you as high as you can with no weight on you at all, just your body for one attempt would be power. Okay. Does that does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So training for power is different than training for strength. Strength contributes to power, but if you don't train for power as well, you're going to miss out a lot on that specific type of performance. So you got to incorporate some days where you just focus on that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, can I ask a question, a follow up? Because I'm, I think, really bad at recovering. I'm, I'm a pretty impatient person. Mm -hmm. um, if I am changing my workouts to sort of make sure I'm resting between attempts, what are guidelines for how long I should rest? You want to feel ready to exert maximal power again. Mm -hmm. So if you do like a, a 50 yard dash would could also be considered explosive. Um, you would do it and then you'd wait until you felt like you could push it real fast again. Right. Or if I, if I jump as high as I can, I'm not jumping as high as I can and then jumping again as high as I can. I'm jumping as high as I can. And then I'm waiting until I feel like you're I fully can, composed again. Yeah. I can exert that power again. And what you, what you'll find, here's something that's interesting. I'm glad you asked that question. When you're training for power, it's typically your third or fourth attempt that's your best. Okay, mm -hmm. so when people don't rest long enough in between, their first attempt is the best. When it comes to power, you'll do an attempt, and the second or third time, you start to fire more effectively with the muscles, and your, your, your technique gets a little better, and you'll get higher. So you should be able to do better the third or fourth time. If it's getting worse by the second, third, fourth time, you're not resting long enough. That actually fits really well with my experience at competitions where we get three chances at each event. And yep. mm -hmm. just like you said, typically that third one is the best. Exactly. Because yeah. what you did is you, you waited, obviously, in between. central nervous system that. Yes. And you're just, you're able to fire more forcefully, effectively. Your body feels like it's safe to do so. But if you get no rest in between, uh, your first attempt would be your best. So keep those things in mind. Thank you very much. That's really helpful. No problem. Thank awesome. you. And good luck yeah, on your thanks. competition. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. No problem. Yeah. Um, power is probably one of the most misunderstood elements of general fitness. Nobody does it right. Yeah. I was fishing for the CrossFit thing. I see she wrote up yeah. in there that her CrossFit gym and I was trying to see if that's how Maybe she Maybe she just works out there, but yeah, she didn't want to say that she was doing their workout specifically, which yeah. is, you know, yeah, that would... That would be, I'd have different advice for that in terms of uh, if that was what kind of protocol she was using. But um, it is, it, it, it's one of the segments of fitness that is looks the sexiest. And a lot of people will just throw it into their programming kind of willy nilly. But uh, I mean, the biggest thing that is nails on chalkboard to me is when you're already in a state of fatigue and then you're going to go and run a very highly demanding uh, type of an exercise, like a power exercise. Yeah. At that point, you're just, you're just building. It's just waste stamina. The entire, yeah. It's just building. I know my, I, I'm so glad that it came to me because I know that's kind of a telltale sign. It's like your second, third or fourth attempt should be better than the first. That's how you know you're resting long enough and you're doing it properly. Otherwise, if it's not um, that way, it's like the first attempt is good and you just get weaker and weaker with each uh, diminishing attempt. returns. Totally. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.